Hey there, and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuck with Queen Bee Creations, and I am excited for today's craft. If you haven't already subscribed, hit subscribe. You know you wanna. Um, keep me coming at you. But, so today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing Christmas ornaments. So I know that we're getting closer to Christmas, but you still got time to do this one. I ordered in some paints from Amazon, which are called pouring acrylic paint. So if you've ever done like a paint pouring technique, you have typically added um, kind of like a pouring medium to your paints. So whether you're using an acrylic or some people will use, you know, regular paints that they get from home hardware or their hardware store. Um, but you add a medium to it. Um, Floetrol is one that comes to mind that allows it to kind of smooth out and move and potentially create what are called cells, but little things that, little little um, rounds that kind of open up and create kind of a webbing effect and that sort of thing. Um, I don't do a lot of paint porn. So investing in all of that seemed crazy until I found out I could buy pouring acrylics. This has got the stuff already added in. So that makes my life a lot easier because <laughs> I can just go. I can just go. So I did these on Amazon. I got them in like less than 48 hours. I'll put the link to them um, so that you know where I got them or at least you know what they are. This is from uh, uh, the name of the company, Mont Montmart, Montmart. Uh, should I say that in a... So I got um, two kits, which it's looking like I got very similar kits. So one is all metallic. So I have a, a gold, a bronze, a rose gold. So this is the bronze, I'm thinking. This is the gold. It should just say, Cindy, just read them. Yes, bronze, gold, rose gold, and silver. So because I was doing ornaments, I wanted a lot of the others. But what I also wanted, so this one also has gold and bronze because I figured those are the ones I'd use the most. Because if I love this, I'll do a bunch. But I also wanted white and black. So we're going to be using white and black. I'm going to put these babies off to the side for future crafts. Um, I'll get the garbage later. <laughs> and here's what I devised because paint pouring is messy. So you want to set it up so that when you pour the paint, whether you're doing a canvas, anything else, that it's raised up and that the paint is going to roll off the sides and drip onto something so you got to have something that catches it i'm in the shop here so what i did do is these are my my ornament balls is i just took let's see what you guys can see let me do it this way i just took a hunk of styrofoam and i put it into a box lid and i took skewers and i stuck them in so far i'm thinking i am on top of this craft <laughs> So I have glass ball ornaments. You can, you know, I ordered a massive 200 plus container of them. Um, and I was still working my way through those. But you wanna take off the end and we're just gonna prop it on there. And I think that'll work for my paint pour. They'll just pour down over it. You can get your, your ornaments, glass ornaments, from any of your local craft stores are gonna have them. I'm sticking with the round rather than the kind of flat lentil shaped ones um, because I think that the pouring of it will work better. But that's because this is my first time doing this. Once I've done it, and if they look awesome, then I would try. I would try the lentil ones. I'm open to that. So just before you ask, I don't know. <laughs> First time. So what I am going to do 
is, because this is kind of far away for you guys to see, I am going to get this set up and I'm gonna shake up my paints, although they don't look like they need shaking. So I'll just, I'll read the box that I threw away. <laughs> I'll read the box. And then I'll move you into this camera stand hanging over here so that you can see them actually getting poured and see it a little bit up close, which will be a little bit better for you. So we're set, we're gonna trial four of them and uh, Oh, I'm excited to do this. Okay, I was really happy when the paints came in. Okay, so I did read the instructions, which says the paints are ready to go, right? So these paints are all ready to go. Let me put them over on this side because I'm right-handed. Um, the flow trawl or the flow medium is designed to let them flow smoothly. So if these started to thicken up at any time, you could add more to it. Or if it, it's kind of what it does is it changes the viscosity or the, or the texture of your paint. It smooths it out, allows it to flow and move more freely. And especially if you've got thick paint. Um, silicone oil, you can add to it as well, which is what creates the cells. That would be more important to me, I think, if I was doing this on a flat canvas. For now, for us, all that's important is uh, let's pour some paint. So I have a little plastic cup, um, and I don't know how much, but I figure that if I just kind of layer this in, then I can just, if there's more than I need on one, I add it to another. And we're just going to layer we're gonna layer a whack of these colors. And I'm gonna mix the silver with the gold, and uh, like, I don't care. Maybe shaking, I didn't do that. Okay, we're, we're shaking, we're shaking. Oh, that looks better. Okay, there's a glob of that. Let's do, well, let's do separate some colors. The rose gold and the bronze are like similar tones of each other. And let's do a little white because why not? Oh, that white's kind of thick. All right, so really just squirting them into the container is kind of fun. So all that you're doing is kind of layering up these colors and they pour out in their own little rhythm. And I'm kind of putting drops of the black instead of a big squirt because I think the black is gonna be kind of a big color. I like guess it's gonna be distinctive and I don't want it to take over what I'm doing, if that makes sense. Okay, let's just, um, let's just go with this and pour on our first one and just see what it looks like. All right, so if I'm going here, that's the other spot for you. What about this one? This one's better for you guys. Oh, we'll just go. So we're just gonna slowly pour it in. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, black goes far. So you really don't need a lot of black, but man, that makes a big difference having that black in. And what I'm looking at doing is just letting it go so that it will work its own way down over my rim. Oh man, what do you guys think? That looks awesome. Okay, I'm just adding some more to this container and, and going. But look how quick that is. This is a quick craft. I think the longest is just gonna be waiting for everything to dry. And I'm not sure how shiny it is. So we'll have to see once it's dry um, if I need to add a gloss 
finish to it or not. But that's just kind of smoothed its own way down there. And now you can get this paint in. Oh, look at that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys, this is fun. There's a lot more black on this one than you think. It's it's around the other side. Oh no, I can't. I can't swing it around. It doesn't uh, do that. So there's a bunch of black on this side. And actually, um, I need a little bit more to be going down on this side of it. Because it hasn't flowed over around the ball. So you can get this paint in colors. I just chose to do metallics because, I mean, that's just going to work, period. But... Um, They've got like flamingo colors, like, like the hot pinks and things. They've got um, all of like a blue set. And so you really are able to kind of design this in whatever look or pattern is going to work for, for you, right? So if you've got different color combinations in mind, you are not locked into this, but... Okay, so I think that this would be fun with kids too because they could they could squirt into they could squirt the paint into the uh into the container and then uh they could pour over the top. And doing it this way kind of reduces a lot of the possibility of mess. I don't know how much paint I have in here if I have enough just to go ahead and do this guy as he is. Yes, I did. All right, you you maybe need a little bit of stuff on top just to soften you out a little bit because some of these had... Uh... All right, I'm just doing a little bit more because I, I'm missing a little bit of flow down some of them. So I'm just going to top it out a bit. And really, at this point, all we're doing is letting them dry. I'm going to look around the edges just to make sure that I got all of them. Um, add a little bit more if I need to. And then when they're, when they're dry, you can see what I meant about the mess though, right? Like you, you need to have something down. But once I have them dry, we'll, we'll come back and take a look at how they look. They're, they're looking awesome right now though. <laughs> Okay, gang, I'm just pulling you back in quickly here because there was so much paint that was down on the bottom here. You can see I've kind of scraped it up, put it back into the cup, add a little bit, and I took this big acrylic deer, and I'm just going to try paint pouring him. I don't know how it's going to work because he's got so many weird body parts that I don't think are going to get covered, but I'm thinking maybe I can pour the other way afterward or just take some of this paint and paint him afterward I don't know Ooh, I'm up now I'm looking at his body and I'm hoping he works because he's looking pretty cool all right so I'm just I'm just experimenting and we'll see I'm trying to see if I can get it to flow down into his other unreachable sections and we'll see how that goes. Okay, our balls have dried. Look at these. So they dry to the sort of slightly shiny, cut, but, but matte kind of finish. Um, th this one's even more involved, but this one, I took the liberty of going and spraying it with a clear polyacrylic. So you can see both are lovely finishes. It just really depends upon which you prefer. Um, now, 
just to show you. This is our deer. He turned out awfully cool too. So it took a little bit um, of kind of going back as he was mostly drying. His feet are still wet because he was sitting in the middle of this. And what I did do was um, go back into some of the paint to just touch up here and there some spots where you could still see a little bit of the clear acrylic that maybe I didn't catch it. And, you know, coming off the foot, wanted to have drops coming off the belly and I just kept taking a little palette knife. So I'm gonna leave him on his side to dry the bottom of his feet. And I think I'm gonna leave him matte and I think I'm gonna spray the rest of these glossy. So they're gonna match that other one. But I gotta tell you, these these turned out super. I love this guy with the with all of that. Look at all of those stripes there. Just beautiful. Here's the glossy guy. And he's super cool as well. So I'm gonna spray these other ones. And just so you can see this one, how it looked. So individual, they have very cool looks all of their own, but because we use the same colors, same color family, they all go. Just another alternative, super fun, really messy, um, but if you do it in a tray like this that you're just gonna be able to let dry and then throw out, really not a big deal. Kids are gonna love this. So if you're doing it with your kids, I'll put a link to the um, pouring acrylics. I'm sure that they have them at craft stores as well, but I was able to get these, I think within a 24 to 48 hour delivery. So it was a really tight, easy window for me. Um, once I got the idea, I didn't even know these existed. So really pretty awesome. Let me know what you think of these ones, guys. As always, I love to hear from you. You know that. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.